Now let's look at the ambiguous case. All right. So it says using the law of signs with SSA. So as you can remember or recall from geometry, you learned, and I think we all, you actually discussed this in um, coordinate algebra as well, um, the way to find out if uh, two triangles are congruent to each other. These are the rules of the laws that we use. We will use um, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, 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 and or hypotenuse leg. All right. So these combinations are now going to show us um, when to use the law of sine and the law of cosines. And yes, SSA is still a troublemaker. So remember that SSA was not one of the things that we actually used, correct? Remember? Because if you turned it around in reverse, it was the wrong kind of word. All right. So we have seen that using the law of signs with the combination of ASA and AAS guarantees one unique solution and one unique triangle. So we've already done those examples where we can see those. Working with the third option of SSA, however, leaves the door open for several different situations and solutions to occur. For this reason, SSA is referred to as the ambiguous case. So the ambiguous means to open to two or more interpretations. So SSA, if two sides of a non-included angle are given, three situations may occur when dealing with the law of signs. So you can either have one I mean, excuse me, no triangles, so no solution. You can have two triangles, two solutions, or exactly one triangle um, with one solution. So, of course, we have to do some uh, an example, <laughs> but let's remember some facts. In a triangle, the sum of the measures of the interior angle equals 180. We should know that. No triangle can have two obtuse angles just because of the mere definition of the sum of the interior angles. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the right triangle. So when working with a triangle with sine of A opposite of hypotenuse, sine A must be less than 1 and greater than negative 1. Um, the sine of an obtuse angle is defined to be the sine of a supplementary acute angle. All right. So let's do an example. Now, I like to draw it out. Um, I'm not saying you have to draw it out, but this is my preference. I prefer to draw it out. And notice that my drawing is not perfect. It probably will no way, in no form, shape, or fashion look like the actual triangle. It doesn't matter. I just want to see it. <laughs> so here's my angle A. So angle A, um, side A is going to go right across from it. So that's 22.42. And this is just for me. I like to visualize things. Um, for here's my angle B is 22 degrees, and right across from that is my side B, which is 16.8. Okay, and I just want to find the missing um, sides and angles. First thing I'm going to do, I have um, sine of 22 over 16.8. And that's legal, right? I have angle B, side B is equal to the most, the, the logical thing to find next would be angle A, correct? So sine of A over 22.42. All right, so I cross multiply. All right, and then I'm trying to get my sine A by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 16.8. And I get sine A is equal to uh, 0.49921418. 
A1. Okay, so then I need to take the sine inverse to find out what angle A is. So sine inverse. And I just wrote down those decimals because I want to see, want you to see or visualize me putting all of these numbers in my calculator. And I'm not going to keep writing them out. I hope you get the point. So A, angle A, is equal to around 30. Okay, so I got around 30. So I can put this here on my calculator. So this is 30 degrees. Now, one thing um, I hope you remember that the sine of an obtuse angle is equal to the sine of its supplement. So that means that if I subtract 180 from that, um, I should, and that'll be the obtuse angle for my 130, I should get the exact same value. So I need to go back and test that. So I'm going to write that in a different color because I need to go back and make sure. So 180 minus 30 gives me. One fifty, and I can quickly test that out to make sure it works. So one eighty, I mean, excuse me, one fifty plus twenty two is one seventy two. Subtract so one eighty. So that means very well that uh, angle C could be equal to eight. So th this is probably going to be my second triangle. Let's finish solving our first triangle. All right, so we have 30, 22, so we can find out what C is by adding 30 plus 22 to get 52 and subtract 180, we get 128. So uh, angle C is equal to 128. Um, so now all I have to do is find side C. I have run out of space, guys. I hope this is okay if I erase. Remember, you can always go back, pause. This is a video. So, we should survive if we erase. Everything didn't erase. So let's find the last side, side C. So we'll do sine of 128 over C is equal to, well, let's do 30 since we found it. Sine of 30 over 22.42. Um, Probably should have did the 22 instead. We know that that one is definitely more precise. But I've already written it down. <laughs> so we'll do 22.42 cross multiplying. Sine 128 is equal to C sine 30. Divide both sides by sine 30. And I get C is equal to 35.3. All right, so for this triangle, the first triangle, so this is one triangle. I have it at, um, this is my first triangle. Angle 30, angle, um, what was this again, 128. And so on and so forth. So now I have to go back and find out. Um, I have to find the side for angle for angle C for this one, right? So I have the two angles. So now I do sine of A over C is equal to sine of one fifty over twenty two. Point forty two, and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and just we know we're going to cross multiply, 
and I get C is equal to 6.24. Okay, so there's my third triangle. So this is B is equal to 22. Um, so triangle one and triangle two. So that one had two solutions. All right, so let's do the next one. Again, I draw it out. A, B, C, so this is 96, this is 3, and this is 24. So I am going to do sine of 96 over 3 is equal to sine A over um, 24. So I'm solving for A, and just um, for time's sake, my work is gone I apologize so we'll do um, cross multiply 24 sine 96 times 3 sine a also want to make sure that I'm in degrees in my calculator just by the way FYI make sure you're in degrees um, and I noticed that I get sine a is equal to 7.956 dot 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 I can already tell you guys this is not going to work because this is greater than 1 right so if I take the sine inverse of that number to find out what a is it's going to give me an error message and I get the error message so this is no solution this is not a triangle so not a triangle not possible all right last one so we had two solutions, zero solutions. Let's see if this one has one solution. So this is um, A, B, C. So this is 49, 9, and 7. So sine of 49 over 9 equals sine of A over 7. Cross multiply, so that's 7 times sine 49 divided by 9 and I get sine A is equal to 0.5869 dot 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 Take the sine inverse of that. Um, I can take the sine inverse of that. It's less than 1. And I get around 36. So A is around 36. Um, before we find out what, um, well, we can go ahead and find out C. So 36 plus 49 minus 180 gives me 95 so this is 95 let's go ahead and see this is we have to find the um the complement right so 36 minus 180 is 144 so there's a possibility that sign that a is 144 let's see if that works so 144 plus 49 is greater than um 180 so this cannot be a triangle right so only thing left to do is to find side C so again I just put sine of 95 over C is equal to sine of let's use 49 instead over 9 and we can cross multiply and solve and I get C is equal to, I think it's 11.86, so I'll say 11.9. Um, and so this only has one solution because the second one didn't pan out. So this has one solution. This had no solutions. And this one had two solutions. And I hope this helps.